sometimes uh, the war on Wu uh, takes some casualties. And uh, uh, so today, uh, Mr. Dave Gamble, who comes to us from the uh, UK, is an information consultant by trade and a blogger behind the skepticalscience.com blog. Uh, today, Dave will tell us a cautionary tale about blogging, criticism, and libel law. So please welcome Dave with his talk, How to Avoid Getting Sued for Libel. Yes, success, woohoo. Okay, right. I got sued for three million dollars. Now, you might argue they're not real dollars because they were Canadian dollars. Same rule to me. Okay, I've got four points to bring to you today. It's a, it's a cautionary tale. Now, I, just out of curiosity, who, who here blogs? Okay, who drops comments on blogs? Yeah, because you're at risk as well. I didn't appreciate this. So the tale goes back uh, to about April of last year when I wrote a posting on Sai Baba, that well-known charlatan, fraud, and, oh, sorry, I'm not being politically correct, um, asshole. No. Okay, so I'm, I'm not quite from the Penn and Teller uh, school of uh, litigation. Fraud. I, I basically went through the details of who he was, what he had done, what his claims were, and uh, here's the uh, evidence that he's clearly a fraud. And that generated the usual kind of responses in the comments. I had various folks who went, whoa, 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 and explained why he was who they claimed he was. And others who piled in after and said, no, 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 it's, it's all quite, quite correct. Now, what actually happened was that I got one specific comment from somebody who goes, ah, well, if you're blogging about uh, false gurus, there's a Canadian bloke who does all the same magic tricks, and he's living a rather lavish lifestyle and went through all the details. It was an anonymous comment from somebody I had no idea who they were. And that was interlaced to about comment 14 or 15, I think. In response to that, I get a rather bizarre email. It was an email of complaint. Um, apparently, this particular comment was slanderous, which was a rather odd thing to say, because slander is a legal term that applies to spoken communication, whereas this comment was written down. The other thing that was rather odd about the email was that um, apparently the commenter had linked to a website that did not belong to him. <laughs> And it went on in this kind of tone. There, there, was, there were all sorts of bizarre stuff. And towards the end, well, I'm so horribly upset about this that if you don't do something about it, well, I'm going to sue you. And, oh, by the way, best regards. <laughs> Who the heck sends a threatening letter and signs it, best regards? So I, I couldn't resist that one. Now, I think this is where I first made a catastrophic mistake. Because this was, in fact, a letter of complaint. Or should I say email? Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, the, they were cretinous lunatics. But it was still a letter of complaint. Now, there's a couple of things here. It was an anonymous email. They were very vague and waffly. I should have actually formally sent them a letter saying, okay, right, I need to know who you are. I need to understand what your complaint is. I, I need to... I, I, instead, I didn't do that. I went through their email line by line, decimating it. <laughs> well, I couldn't resist. What would you have done? Well, the reaction was, I, I saw a few more comments that appeared on the blog, and I assumed, oh, hey, they're, they're, they're going to blow off steam that way. And that, I thought that was the end of it. Unfortunately, the, the email I actually had sent to them in response was sufficiently provocative to motivate them to go, right. And so I got um, a letter of complaint, uh, formally from a lawyer based in Canada. Now, I live in the UK, so you kind of think, okay, right, this guy's written a letter, 
Um, he's arranged for it to be delivered to my home address. Well, yeah, okay, so I don't keep, the, I don't keep a secret as to who I am or where I am. That doesn't matter. And it was, uh, has the mic gone off? Nope, back on. Okay, and so inside the letter, um, he basically said, yada, 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 you posted this, please take it down, um, or else. And I thought to myself, come on, it's not the posting he's complaining about, it's just one comment. Now, I chose to ignore it. Think to yourself, now, I, I live in the UK. This is a guy who's in Canada. What can he possibly do? You know, even if he takes me to court in Canada. I, I'm a foreign citizen. I, I have no assets in Canada. I don't care anything about Canada. No, my, is the mic cutting in and out? Is that okay? Right, okay. So, I thought to myself, well, who would be stupid enough to actually go to court and sue me over one comment. No, nobody could be that stupid. I mean, really, come on. Well, they decided to prove that thought wrong. <laughs> okay, this was my second big mistake. If you get a legal letter, don't ignore it. Take some action on it. Now, the first point here is, okay, take it down, whatever they're complaining about. It's not permanent. If you take it down, What's to stop you then having a nice, friendly, or formal dialogue, establishing the facts, working out what exactly is going on, and if there's no credibility to what they're saying, you can post it back up again, or not, as the case may be. Okay, so, what happened next? They decided to actually sue me. They issued a statement of claim from a court in Toronto. Oh, right, okay. I'm blocking the antenna. That's the way I'm holding the mic. I'm so sorry, I haven't been on the microphone holding course yet. <laughs> okay, so, uh, where was I? Oh, yes, okay, so they issued a statement of claim. Now, this is a legal document that basically says, issued by the court in Toronto, um, well, it was basically saying, you issued this comment, we're, we're suing you for damages for the tune of three million dollars. <laughs> and that's when I decided, it's probably a good idea to take this comment down now. <laughs> okay, so, the problem here, the third problem I faced was the fact that sometimes when you're good at certain things, I, I'm an IT guy, I'm good at IT kind of things, it can sometimes create the false sense of confidence that, ooh, I can fix this myself. It's easy, I mean, how hard can it be? They've issued a statement of claim. I can do a little bit of reference from my good friend, Dr. Google, um, who's very reliable. <laughs> and I can issue my own statement of defense. What could possibly go wrong? Well, don't do it, seriously. Really, really don't do it. What actually happened was that I was perceived to be a very, very small fish and they proceeded to eat me for lunch because this wasn't the plaintiffs who were dealing with this. They had hired professionals. Okay, so here's what I should have done. I should have tapped into my skeptical network. And this is how, in fact, I finally resolved things. There are many, many good people out there. In fact, there are many, many good people here who are more than willing to help and more than able to help. And so what I eventually did was that I posted a comment on the JREF forum, which, well, a quick summary of it is basically, help! <laughs> and a few very good folks came along and said, well, this and that and the other, and several of them said, ah, you need to talk to, and pointed out uh, one of the forum leads uh, who was a lawyer in Canada, in fact, in the very same city, uh, Colleen Robertshaw. Uh, by the way, Colleen, are you in the room? No? Nope. Okay, well, she, she was a tremendous help. And she gave me some very, very good advice. Uh, she took the time to go through all the paperwork and said, right, okay, so you need to do this, you need to do that. And finally, I was on the right track. Now, I also had conversations with several other folks, such as Simon Singh, who was very, very helpful as well, and he gave me some good guidance and pointed me in the right direction. 
Um, and he pointed me towards an English libel lawyer who said, look, he says, quite often when these things happen, it's just a shot across the bows. They don't really mean it. They're just trying to gag you. I'm doing it again, aren't I? I'm holding the microphone the wrong way. Okay, so he, he, his observation was from his experience is that people quite often uh, will back off from a position of strength. And this was confirmed. This is actually what happened because Colleen said, right, okay, send a formal little note to the plaintiff's lawyers saying that you are going to engage legal counsel. And that's exactly what I did. And the very next response, almost immediate response I had back from them was, ah, right, okay, right. Um, tell you what, take the comment down and we'll go away. <laughs> to which I thought, yeah, you know, that's not a bad idea. Well, there are, certain, there are certain times when it's a good idea to actually take a stand, and there are other times when it's a good idea to, you know, this is not a battle that's worth fighting, because this was an anonymous comment that they were complaining about from somebody who I had no idea who they were, and yes, some of the comment was quite factually correct, and some of it actually was libelous. And so I had no appetite to really defend it. So I agreed to remove the comment, and they agreed not to bother me again. So who really won? Well, how much did it cost me? How much did it cost them? Well, it cost me a heck of a lot of stress, it's true, because in fact I had discovered that I did face being wiped out completely financially. Um, yes, if I'd done nothing, a default judgment in Canada can actually be enforced in the UK because the UK and Canada have reciprocal arrangements. Now, on the other hand, if I happened to live in Norway, I could have simply gone, yeah, and they couldn't have done anything. <laughs> but because I happened to geographically live in the UK, well, pff, but what did it actually cost them? It cost them over 50,000 Canadian dollars in fees. <laughs> Just to remove one comment. Yes, they were cretinous lunatics, and here's the evidence. Why would somebody do that? Well, well, come to that in a minute. Well, their, their claim was, in fact, no, no, you've made a horrible mistake. We're just a charity. We're, we're not a religious group at all. Uh, we're, we're not pretending to be Sai Baba. We're not doing magic tricks. No, 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 horrible mistake. Um, that's why we're suing you. And so no doubt they'd use their charitable funds, all $50,000, to have this one comment removed. Well, okay. So, let, let's meet the head of the charity. Now remember, th th this is a respectable charity and a horrible mistake had been made and th there's no religious connotations here whatsoever and here he is. <laughs> oh, he's dressed as Sai Baba. Oh, he even, ha he even has a photograph of Sai Baba in the background. Yes, they were a small minority religious group. So what would motivate these people to be so concerned about one comment? Well, what I've since discovered was that this gentleman, and I use the term very loosely, <laughs> was in fact currently on trial as the uh, fixer in a bid rigging scam. And so what they were actually doing was going through the internet and attempting to remove anything negative said, said about this guy so that when they presented their case in court for the bid rigging scam, he would look nice and squeaky clean. So that, that's really what was motivating these folks. But in the end, I mean, what actually happened to me was pointless, it was frivolous, and I suspect it could have been avoided. So I've got four things to suggest if you blog to avoid being liable, uh, to avoid a libel lawsuit. The first thing is, look, if people start complaining, be polite, be courteous, courteous to treat them as uh, folks and try and establish what they're trying to complain about. Don't ignore legal requests. It really is not a good idea. Um, take it down, then have a dialogue, and if there's no reason whatsoever, post it back up. It's not permanent. And really, don't do what I do. Don't try to fix it yourself. Take some proper guidance. Now, I, it was one comment, but their legal paperwork ran to 52 pages. And tap into your network here. You've got some good folks here who are more than willing to help. Um, I mean, for example, I, I, I sent a, a couple of emails to DJ and he was ever so supportive and I really appreciated that. Because in, in dark moments like that, when you realize that you potentially face being completely wiped out financially, 
It means a lot to have people behind you who, who come in and say, look, we're with you. You're not alone. Okay. So I'll let you use the podium mic. Do we have any questions for David? Uh, why didn't you counter sue uh, clouding your name? Why didn't I counter sue? Um, it's a good question. Um, I, I really had no, I, I'd never heard of these people before. I had no idea who they were. And to be honest, I, I think I was content to let the legal process of uh, this guy going on trial as a, a fixer in a bid rigging scam to take its own uh, due course. And I, I think if I had actually countersued, it wouldn't have been very productive. And at the end of the day, I had started off with my own statement of defense. And that's the point where I could have actually come back with a counterclaim if I'd had proper legal advice. But because I was doing it myself, I was just going <gasps> into defensive mode. Thank you. So first off, um, your derogatory comments about Canadians are completely offensive and you'll be hearing from my lawyer. <laughs> um, secondly, I'm, I'm curious, um, had they actually baited you to take you to libel court in the UK this could have been a very different situation uh, because of the kind of antiquated libel laws in the UK. And um, I know that a lot of people have been, been taken to court for that. Um, have you, do you have any advice to try and uh, uh, get around that issue? Well, I interestingly enough, what, what I did discover was that the libel laws in Canada are based on the English libel laws and are just as uh, plaintiff friendly. Um, so I don't think I'd have been so badly off if it had been English libel laws, because I did actually, through Simon Singh, have a contact with a good English libel lawyer, but his um, thinking was, well, look, I know nothing about Canadian law. You're going to have to go and find somebody else. Um, okay. <laughs>